Well, all right. Um, I guess. I guess I'm usually the person introducing, but it's just me up here. <laughs> so. Uh, we're going to talk about the state of the world, and this is always a fun presentation because it's modeled on the State of the Union speech, right? We go through, sort of talk the past, the present, the future of WordPress, what's been going on, what's been interesting, and uh, what's coming, which is usually the most interesting part. Um, so I am Matt Mullenweg. I'm not the number one Matt on the internet anymore, as aforementioned. Um, at PhotoMatt on Twitter, my website's ma.tt. Uh, one of the co-founders of WordPress. This is my picture the day I started working on WordPress. <laughs> no, in actuality, I was, uh, I was 19 years old. It was, I guess, six years ago now. Um, in fact, tonight, we are celebrating WordPress's sixth birthday, which was on Wednesday. So all come out to the party. <laughs> in the beginning, though, there was no WordPress. There was actually a piece of software called B2. Uh, B2 was an open source, GPL, PHP, MySQL blogging system that I had moved to after using movable type. And I was completely blown away um, because it was the first time, well, before, if any of you are super old school, you remember you used to have to have like a CGI bin and certain permissions for certain scripts and to change the title of your blog, you'd have to edit a file. I found V2 and it was PHP and it was so easy. V2 was also the first time I ever contributed to an open source project. So at the time, because I was so cool, I was really into typography. And um, like many cool 19-year-old geeks. And um, if those of you who wrote on the web back then, if you wanted to have proper typographic entities, so instead of a double prime mark, you wanted curly quotes, you'd have to actually type it out. So to do an opening curly quote, you would type, you know, ampersand, hash, 8220, uh, semicolon, uh, which would kind of slow down your vibe. And uh, so I thought, <laughs> well, computers can do this, right? And uh, there's a great Jamie Zawinski quote, uh, you have a problem and you think, oh, I'll use regular expressions, and now you have two problems? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my solution. I, I got a book on regular expressions, Mastering Regular Expressions by Riley, and I just started diving into them, like, all right, I can do this. And uh, eventually came up with a set of regular expressions. Uh, that would sort of do their best to curl your quotes. Uh, we called it Texturize, and it was so good it made your quotes curl. And um, I published it on my blog, and the most amazing thing happened. The lead developer of B2, whose name was Michelle, over in Corsica, France, saw this code, also into typography. We actually share a lot of interest, also into photography, everything. Um, said, hey, this is awesome. Why don't you submit this as a patch to um, you know, B2? I had no idea what a patch was. <laughs> so I'm Googling frantically, like, what does, is there something, is there a hole in my pants? I mean, what's going on here? I get on SourceForge, I make the patch, I submit it, and it is accepted. And that was my first ever contribution to an open source project. And it was a total, total, total rush. Who here has contributed to an open source project? That's a good number. You know, it's, it's a total high. This, the, and for me, I was like, wow, dozens of websites around the world are running my code. <laughs> I was blown away. <laughs> um, so that was the story of my first involvement with open source. I started getting active, just contributing to the B2 forums, hanging out. I didn't really know any PHP or coding at the time, but just started you know, hacking around, breaking things, fixing them, eventually learning little bit by bit. Um, fast forward about a year. The lead developer of B2, Michelle, sort of disappeared off the face of the planet. No one had known where he had gone. Uh, there was the website was coming up for expiration, there was no activity on the forums, uh, and he was the only real lead developer. There weren't a lot of people sort of working on the core software, so everyone was starting to get worried. I did a blog post, actually. I called it the blogging software dilemma, because obviously this was the most important thing in my life at the time. And I said, well, you know, B2, we're not sure what's going on with it, but wouldn't it be nice if there was something that combines sort of the best aspects of all these other blogging systems? And so the ones I mentioned at the time were the elegance of text pattern, which was my favorite. If, it, if text pattern had been GPL, actually, WordPress probably wouldn't exist. I wanted the simplicity of Blogger, the extensibility of movable type, which had a ton of plugins and cool things going for it, and the hackability of B2. This fellow who I'd never met before, a day later, left a comment on my blog. His name was Mike Little, and he was in England. And he said, hey, Matt, if you're serious about this, let's work together. And thus, WordPress was born on a blog. Uh, <laughs> We started working together, and the early versions of WordPress focused on 
uh, you know, ease of installation, and we brought in this, the original, we called it the Lynx Manager, which is now known as Blog Roll. Just some of these initial features, and uh, started cranking. But we would have never been able to do this if it wasn't for the core freedoms uh, that were inherent in B2. I didn't really understand this at the time, but to go from V2 to WordPress was actually a big shift. It was technically called a fork in the community. Uh, but we couldn't do this if V2 had been GPL. What does the GPL mean? The GPL guarantees certain freedoms. There's the freedom to use the software for any purpose, which means you can use it for commercial purposes, you can run the Nazi site, Matt cuts, throw it on, you can do anything. You do good or bad things with it. You have the freedom to modify the software. So the fact that I was modifying my copy of B2 was actually really important. And it's not something that I could have done uh, with proprietary software. And then most importantly, you have the right to the freedom to redistribute those changes. So the fact that Mike and I were able to take B2 and start redistributing something called WordPress uh, was enabled by the core freedoms in this license. Otherwise, we just would have been stuck. You know, what happens when a proprietary software vendor goes away? The community dies. When it goes away in open source, usually many things spring out of it. And actually, there were four or five forks of B2. There was B2++, uh, B2 Evolution, WordPress, uh, what they did was we sort of, I went to a lot of the other fork people and said, oh, hey, let's start working together. And we all started working together. And then when Michelle came back, it turns out he had just needed to check out from the internet for a little bit. He was fine. Everyone was fine. He came back. And uh, he said, this is awesome. This is now the official continuation of V2. So we actually got an official blessing from the project we forked from. And it became sort of the big thing. Then things started to get funny. Um, where before it was just me, Mike, one or two other people. In fact, for a while, there were more developers on WordPress than there were users. <laughs> I'd install it for my friends. A community started to develop. And we made two very, very lucky, fortunate mistakes, if you will, in early versions of WordPress. The first was in WordPress 1.2. We introduced plugins, uh, the plugin system, which those of you, who's written a plugin here? That's a smart crowd. <laughs> I should have known it is a WordCamp, right? <laughs> uh, you know, WordPress has a pretty unique system of uh, actions and hooks where you can very easily sort of insert your code into almost any point in the execution of the program. And with 1.5, we're really inspired with a, a theme called Kubrick that started to break up. At this time, themes in WordPress, there was just one. There were no themes, and it was just one file. It was index.php, and everything went through it. Um, we were inspired by Kubrick and started to bring in themes. These two decisions are, I think, the most crucial in WordPress's history. And if you study you know, successful open source projects, actually something that happens pretty commonly. What happens in most open source projects is instead of everyone wanting their 15 minutes of fame, everyone wants their 15 pixels of fame, right? <laughs> everyone wants their, their bit of code or their feature to be in. And if you say no, sometimes they get angry and they want to go work on something else or they don't like the project anymore. But if you build a platform, which WordPress is, you allow them to sort of do whatever they like, however weird it is, however good it is, however bad it is, within a framework which allows them to still be part of the community and other people to benefit it, while still keeping the core, you know, the basic code that runs WordPress and that we all use, clean, fast, light, and easy. You can sort of, it's the cure for bloatware that has plagued software for the past 20 years. So that was our lucky thing, and uh, it's growing. You know, WordPress has done pretty well. Uh, I, I like running these stats every year because it's interesting to see. It's a little bit different from last year. So this is stats from the past 12 months versus the 12 months before that. So two years ago, we did 2840 commits, which is 2840 commits, which is the number of times the code has changed. That's up to 3,400 this year. We did 5 million downloads, we more than doubled that to 10 million, almost 11 million downloads of the core WordPress software. We were tracking, when I was up here last year, we were tracking about 2.6 million .org blogs. That's almost doubled to 5.5 million. WordPress.com, 1.9 million blogs were created. That's 3.4 now. And this is one of my favorite stats because it's like an activity of how many, how much people are actually using it. 31 million new posts last year, up to 58 million. 8 billion page views last year, now up to 22 billion page views. Of that, um, oh, last year, one third of the page views were on .org, two thirds were on .com. This is, the page views are just things we're tracking with our stat system. Uh, this year, it was 55% uh, on .com, now 45% on .org. So the traffic to .org blogs is growing a lot. There was one stat that did not almost double or triple, and I was very happy with it. <laughs> Last year we had about 4.6 billion spams. This year, only 4.9 billion. <laughs> so thank you, spammers, for giving us a little bit of a break. <laughs> I've never said thank you, spammers, before in my life. <laughs>
The other thing that we did last year, and we do every year at the State of the Words, is we make a number of predictions. And I love predictions. Predictions are one of my most favorite things. Um, it's sort of like the Dilbert quote, the best thing about deadlines is the whooshing sound they make as they pass you. <laughs> well, I've got some predictions here. 1949, Popular Mechanics said, computers in the future may only have a thousand vacuum tubes and perhaps only weigh 1.5 tons. <laughs> I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. <laughs> I've got five computers like on my body usually. <laughs> that was 1943. This is one of my favorites. Uh, the Macintosh uses an experimental pointing device called a mouse. There is no evidence that people want to use these things. <laughs> is John Dvorak here actually? Are you here in the audience? He was here last year. Uh, that was 1984. The year I was born actually. Two years from now, spam will be solved. Bill Gates in 2004. <laughs> we need some good fail graphics for this, right? Some good fail blog. And then in 2008, BB Press and Back Press will be ready this year. <laughs> so a long line of failed predictions, um, of which I am proud to be a part of. Uh, good news, though. Both BB Press and Back Press are officially coming out with version 2.8. I'm not going to tell you when version 2.8 is coming out, <laughs> but it'll be simultaneous, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. I made a couple of other predictions in 2008. One was that we'd have much better fashion and tattoos this year. The exact quote was, I'm hoping we can get some of the brilliant minds in the WordPress community to open source our t-shirt stuff. You'll see in these quotes, I was extra articulate, super articulate. Uh, and this has gone super well. Um, so this, we got a little slideshow here. Uh, oops. Oh, that's interesting. Boom. So this is our fine model Andy Skelton. This is the last year's WordCamp shirt. Over on the left we have the Philippines. On the right we have Indonesia from WordCamp. That is Australia. Check that out. Isn't that crazy? And look at that contemplative look. <laughs> on the left, check. That's Andy trying to look French, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> We got Charlotte working, but the French one was awesome because it was a combo work camp and bar camp. And look, it's got the wine glass, it's got the guy with the mustache. Um, the organizer told me, he was like, I had to tell the illustrator to take off the beret. <laughs> <laughs> this was what, work camp Ed, I believe it was? I love this one because look what it is. It's a bunch, it's a WordPress logo in negative space made up by a bunch of different W's. This is actually something that's not in production, something someone just sent me. It is a Wordle made from all the functions in WordPress. So you can see there's sort of a, a heat map there of all the different functions. We got, um, oh, and finally, WordCamp Portland. Now, can anyone spot the problem in this picture? Was that? It's not Andy. No, no, no. The logo. Yes. Unfortunately, they used the wrong W. So you can't tell. Do you see how that W is kind of short and squats? The real WordPress W is tall and elegant. There are thousands of examples of it here. <laughs> At the um, at WordCamp, so friends don't let friends use the wrong W. So I said fashion and tattoos. We actually finally made some temporary tattoos. Uh, this is in Hong Kong, uh, and I believe we have some here, right? We have the temporary tattoos. They're pretty fun. You just like get a piece of water, you put it on there, and uh, depending on how you do it, I found that I've been I must have put these on a hundred times, <laughs> and I found that like if you if you like. Clean it beforehand with a little alcohol. It stays on for like four days without washing off, even if you're showering. And um, But we had another interesting thing. We actually had someone get a real WordPress tattoo. Uh, is Ed here? I believe Ed was thinking about coming out. Ed! <laughs> a round of applause for this man. <laughs> Can you hold up your hands? Nice. Wow. I, I've actually never seen it. Um, at first, I, was, I saw this, and I was like, this has got to be Photoshop, you know? But no, it's a real tattoo, right? Wow. That is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, actually, when that happened, I was like, man, we can never change the logo now. <laughs> right? I mean, now that someone's tattooed it on their body permanently, I, I, all right, we're sticking with the logo. <laughs> Good thing I like it. Uh, Another prediction, we made a set of predictions around Crazy Horse. I said, super duper important is going to be Crazy Horse. I guess I was in a Yoda phase at this point in the keynote last year. Um, and we, of course, had Liz and Jane uh, doing a presentation last year, writing the Crazy Horse. 
Um, for the record, when we named Crazy Course, we did not know it was a strip club in San Francisco. <laughs> Just for the record. Um, no, really. <laughs> I was very embarrassed when I found that out. So this is some slides of WordPress through the year. Does anyone remember this? Does anyone use WordPress at this time? All right, we got one, two, three. Oh, a fair number. Um, so you can have, some, you, there were no colors. It was all black and white. Uh, that was the logo I designed. We're not using that one anymore. Thankfully, no one tattooed it. <laughs> uh, you can only have one category. There was no publish button, just a blog this. Um, it was very, very simplistic. Uh, no options, no WYSIWYG, no tags, no anything. This was WordPress, I think, 0.70. Uh, later, we upgraded. We put a little blue in the logo. <laughs> And interface follies, if you click that WordPress, it would actually not take you to your homepage or the dashboard. It would take you to WordPress.org, so you could be writing a post. And of course, there's no autosave or anything like that, so you lose your post. We added a few more buttons there. You could save as draft, save as private, advanced editing, which then took you to a screen. So this was our simple editor. Then it was an advanced editor that did everything. It had like everything smushed on the one page. It was like interface diarrhea. And then you had uh, categories. You could have more than one category now. We later upgraded. We put your title at top. I believe this was 2.0-ish, uh, but not out of many other changes. Then came the revolution. We introduced the color blue. <laughs> this was quite controversial. <laughs> Who knew blue could be so much trouble? Uh, this is, I believe, 2.0, and we added two things in there. We allowed you to move stuff around, added a WYSIWYG, which almost caused like a revolution in the WordPress community. I put a little blue in there. 2.5, we did the big redesign. Uh, those of you who remember this, we worked with Happy Cog, sort of looked at the usability, tried to simplify things. And then we did Crazy Horse, right? Who saw Crazy Horse when it first came out? This is kind of what it looked like. Um, and these screenshots leaked through the internet. I thought if we called it Crazy Horse, no one would use it. <laughs> but it turns out that these screenshots leaked, and I was like, oh, this is going to be the worst thing ever. It's horrible. This is the ugliest interface I've ever seen. Uh, but luckily, we managed to go from that to this which is what we all use and love today, hopefully. And, um, yeah? Oh, cool. <laughs> I like when you guys clap, because it gives me a chance to drink. Water. <laughs> a lot of changes. Uh, basically, the focus of 2.7 and the whole crazy horse process was to make things faster. The goal of WordPress is to be completely invisible. You shouldn't be thinking about WordPress. You should be thinking about your content and your readers and your audience and whether you're above or below six on hot or not. And there are all these important things that bloggers have to uh, focus on. And so WordPress should get out of your way. It should be invisible. We introduced some things like QuickPress. Um, here's a little screenshot of QuickPress in action. Basically, the idea of putting an ability to post right on your homepage. Uh, this has been pretty successful. We're now getting around seven or 8,000 QuickPresses per day just on WordPress.com alone. Things like threaded comments. You know, we have the ability to have conversations which uh, have a real meaningful structure, sort of closing the gap between comments and, um, and forums, something that's been sort of brought to fruition by Intense Debate, which is actually something we invested in last year. It does sort of everything at once. We introduced things like the plugin browser. Who's ever used the plugin browser? It's kind of awesome. You can just type anything in and then direct from WordPress, without leaving the site, without going to WordPress.org, without anything, you get all the search results, and you could basically, as close to one click as we could make it without Amazon suing us, <laughs> install a plugin. Um, and then you're done. One click upgrades, which was really one of my favorite things. Oops. Still going. I guess it takes longer than I thought. <laughs> one click upgrades, uh, which are pretty exciting because, as Matt said, you know, security, as WordPress is a platform, having a secure platform was one of the most important things. And uh, the biggest complaint we got so far it was it's too hard to upgrade. Who was getting tired of upgrading? I know I was. I was writing the darn thing. <laughs> um, so we made it, again, as close as possible to we try our darndest when you click that button to download the new WordPress, upgrade it, check your plugins, everything like that. And this has actually had a huge effect. Um, when 2.71 came out, which was the first version of WordPress that included the first update to WordPress that uh, used to, excuse me, the auto upgrade. We actually did a record 114,000 downloads that day alone. So we're now getting sort of unprecedented, excuse me, rates of people upgrading. Uh, I don't know what this is doing. Oh, upgrade. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. 
<laughs> there we go. So this is the demo of the upgrade. <laughs> and then most importantly, we've been focusing on making it faster. Um, so improving that. Actually, when I was making those screenshots for like the old version of the WordPress, WordPress 0.7 and WordPress 1.0, I like went back and subversion and used them. I was like, man, this is way faster than it is today. <laughs> There's no CSS, no JavaScript, no images, no anything. And it made a really fast experience. And we're now we're using techniques like Steve Souders is going to talk about later in the developer day downstairs. Um, all these other things, we're able to really sort of hypercharge the performance. Also, the incredible improvements in browsers like Chrome, Safari 4, and Firefox 3.5, thanks to a lot of really cool things around Gears, HTML5, offline. Eventually, I want to get to the point where whether you're offline or online, whether you're on a plane or at your desk, WordPress just works seamlessly. Everything. And everything's just instantaneous. And maybe it syncs in the background or something. We haven't figured it out yet, but that's the eventual goal. You know, whether it shouldn't matter whether you're in your browser or on a desktop. It's all about just getting out of your way, being invisible. Astra also said it would be the year of themes. This is where the real innovation is going to be. Keep an eye on themes this year. We did a couple of cool things around themes. We introduced the theme directory, um, which was sort of a big uh, win for us. Because at the time, when I was on stage last year, uh, there was a huge problem with themes, where people were making these basically other theme directories, but embedding all the themes with malware, spam, you know, they'd have all sorts of bad stuff in them, or basically putting restrictions in it, like you have to have a link to our, you know, get a mortgage with Viagra site or something if you want to use the theme. Um, so we really want to encourage themes that were free at the core, GPL, just like WordPress, through and through. It's been sort of a, a trend. The new problem, the new sort of challenge that we're facing with themes is this whole idea of GPL versus premium. Premium, who's, who uses a premium theme here, actually? So-called premium theme. <laughs> a better word for them is proprietary, for many of them. Um, so for many of these themes, we had a big problem last year because people started to introduce themes. That, remember the freedoms I talked about before? The freedoms of the GPL, the freedoms of open source, that would restrict your freedoms. They would say, you can buy this theme for 80 bucks, but after you do, you can't redistribute it, you can only use it on one site, you have to keep a footer link, and any number of things. Um, but fortunately, some folks this year, led by Brian Gardner of Revolution and some other people following, started to actually take their premium themes, so themes that were had extra features, paid support, things like that, and make them GPL as well. Now, people always ask me, well, how can it be GPL and cost money? Remember the first freedom. You have the freedom to do whatever you like with the software, including charge for it. In theory, we could charge a dollar for WordPress or something like that. But whoever gets it from you has also the freedom to redistribute it if they like. They should just call it something different. So there's actually nothing incompatible about selling a GPL theme. And it's kind of a cool business model. We'll talk a little bit about business models in the future. Um, but you know, what they're selling, the code is becoming a commodity, right? But if they're able to sell the support, the updates, the everything like that, it's pretty viable. We're also, to encourage this, I've never believed in sort of, you know, We've had one of the premium theme guys, like the thesis guys, are like, oh, you should sue us to prove the GPL or something like that. I don't want to do that. But we do want to encourage the good things. So introducing today, or later tomorrow, we're going to be putting a theme on our theme uh, page, a, theme, a page of all the people who are doing premium supported, commercially supported themes. Uh, so basically highlighting the people who are abiding by GPL and allowing the community to grow. An amazing thing about themes is that there's a, Everything, just like WordPress was built on V2, a surprising number of themes in the directory use another theme as their base. So you have, you know, the sort of famous themes, the Kubrick's, the Hemingway's, the, you know, the Maddox, those types of things, uh, inspire a lot of innovation after them. And so it's really cool that even these paid things are allowing people to build on top of them. Other big trend has been GPL free marks. This is kind of cool. So what do we got site number one, behind door number one? We got site number one, site number two, site number three. We'll go through those again. What do you think these all have in common? All the, well, they're all using WordPress, yes. <laughs> Any other guesses? Sandbox. That's close. That's close. That's close. One more guess. Boom! Every single one of them was built on thematic, which normally looks like this. So we're having this sort of growth of theme frameworks, call it thematic, sandbox is a fantastic one. They're allowing you to use these GPL bases and create child themes or create really exciting ways to not have to reinvent the wheel. And you can customize them quite a bit. One of my favorite sayings is, do you remember this cartoon? 
I've modified it here. It says, on the internet, nobody knows you're a blog. <laughs> Originally it said, nobody knows you're a dog. Um, so yeah, on the internet, no one knows you're using WordPress. You can create amazing, fully featured CMS-like sites just using one of these free themes out there and a little bit of customization. And I love that now people are starting to combine the GPL and business. Um, we're now seeing sort of hybrid business models of things that don't take away any of your freedoms, but still allow you know, people to flourish, businesses to grow, and lots of investment to go into the WordPress world. And to demonstrate this, I was actually going to call for an up the stage, Alex King. So a round of applause for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Alex is going to talk briefly about sort of his experience with the GPL and business. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, uh, are you clicking? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, I've got a long history with, uh, with Matt and WordPress, and um, over the last uh, couple of years, created a, a business called Crowd Favorite in uh, Denver, Colorado. And uh, two years ago, hired uh, sorry, um, hired our first person. Uh, started doing a lot of WordPress customization development work, and we're now up to a full-time um, staff of eight people, um, doing primarily WordPress work. So we've got a good um, base of people, all being supported by WordPress. All of the work that we do and uh, publish is. Uh, GPL, uh, the plugins and themes that we create are uh, GPL, and uh, basically it's a, a service model where we're able to uh, leverage the work that we're building uh, with WordPress to solve problems for other people and let them use uh, WordPress uh, to drive their websites and build integrations and um, things like that. One of the uh, things that we, one of the things that we've built is a theme framework, uh, like Matt was talking about. Uh, our framework's a little bit different. It's, uh, uh, it's called Carrington. It's designed really for people that are building um, sites uh, using WordPress as a backend that are uh, more CMS sites. Um, Carrington is uh, free, GPL, and uh, we've also released a couple of themes uh, based on the Carrington framework. Uh, the most uh, recent thing we've done is uh, launch a help center, and this is um, a little bit different. We were uh, you know, while Crowd Favorite um, typically works on slightly larger projects, um, the help center is designed to, to kind of pick up the slack, that things that um, you know, we were getting a lot of people emailing in with questions, um, small customizations, things like that, that uh, we were having a hard time fitting in uh, with our other commitments. So we launched the help center, which is, I believe, the first on-call uh, WordPress support and customization center, or you can actually just uh, pick up a phone, call somebody, and get an answer right there. And um, everything's uh, low cost. Um, and this launched uh, a month and a half ago. And we're already looking to hire uh, two additional developers because it's doing very well. Um, so, um, well, good success story of being able to make a living and support people with WordPress. actually is it like Zappos can you call them and ask for like the nearest pizza place or anything like that will they answer any question uh, not <laughs> he's not gonna say yes <laughs> so Alex is a great example of definitely the high end of the market we've got a list on uh, one of our pages a list of WordPress consultants just like Alex's business there are dozens if not hundreds of other businesses that are 100% GPL and sort of you know doing lots of work around WordPress just out of curiosity here, who here works on WordPress, like as part of their job, or does client work, or does... Hold your hands high. Wow, look around. That's a lot of folks. Also, if you're not raising your hand, you know who to ask for help now. <laughs> WordPress is also the fastest growing uh, skill on Elance. Uh, it was actually the top platform there on the skills on demand. There was PHP, uh, MySQL, and then 13 was WordPress, uh, which was pretty neat. Uh, let's see if we can skip back there. We're the very highest platform. I was trying to skip this slide. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also, on Odesk, there was a 427% increase in demand for WordPress, which made it more popular than even uh, writing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what they're doing with their WordPress. <laughs> more popular than SEO, more popular than XHTML, pretty much anything out there. Um, 
So it's really kind of exciting to see this demand for WordPress. And I love that now larger and larger portions of the web are being built on a framework and a system that's 100% open source. Because that's making the web a more accessible, more democratic, more stable and secure place. And it's kind of neat to see open source moving up the stack as well. Already like 60 or 70% of websites in the world go through an open source web server, like Apache. Wouldn't it be amazing if even 10 or 20% of the websites in the world were using an open source system like WordPress? We've been doing a lot of things too as well on the theme front. Uh, one of them is P2. Has anyone heard of P2 here? A couple of folks. I'm going to show you just a quick thing here. Basically the idea behind P2 is what was happening is he can post and it just immediately publishes on there. And at the home page, if you're logged in, it's got a post box at the very top. Looks a lot like Twitter, right? The idea behind this, the genesis, was that internally to Automatic, the company, uh, we were all Twittering a ton, but we never actually used our own blog, which is <laughs> a little embarrassing. Uh, so we thought, well, what if we could lower the friction and have a way to just have a fast way to post? The first version of this was called Prologue. And when P2 came along, we started having a problem where, well, we're doing a ton of posts per day, but the conversation is getting lost. So we tried to do something different that I haven't seen in WordPress thing before and move the conversation right to the home page. So everything's JavaScript, everything's Ajax. Right on the home page, you can post a comment, and it goes in right there. And all the comments are shown in line in threaded format. And the coolest thing about this is, let's say, I'm on my computer and Alex posts a comment. It shows up on my computer immediately. So constantly in the background, it's sort of polling, getting updates, and everything like that. So you have almost like a real-time asynchronous chat, but it's in a blog. So you have tags, categories, search, you know, real links. You can use HTML. You can type longer than 140 characters if you're having a big thought. I mean, it's actually really, really powerful for coordination. We're also starting to see people use this for their blogs. We've even toyed with the idea. Well, first I was like, well, maybe we should make this the default theme on WordPress.com. But more, what I thought is sort of fundamentally cool about this is just that box on the home page. Um, so we're actually looking at now. There's a cool plugin for it, I forget the name. But just putting that posting box on the home page of every blog. If you're logged in, why should you have to go to the dashboard? You can also see here there's edit links, everything on the home page. None of this takes you to the dashboard. You can use P2 without ever visiting the back end of WordPress, which is a pretty major departure from the way we've traditionally done things. The other big uh, system we've been doing is BuddyPress. Another prediction. I said, I think BuddyPress is going to be really interesting over the next year. Who here is using BuddyPress? Just out of curiosity. So a handful of people. Who's heard of it? A lot of people. Nice. Well, I'll just give a quick intro for those who haven't. BuddyPress is basically the idea is if what if you could take Facebook and put it in a box? And what if you could take social networking and put it on an open source framework like WordPress, where it's as easy to create a social network as it is to create a blog today? What happens then? Well, here to tell us what happens, Sandy Peatley. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Nick? Yeah. So I'm just going to give a kind of a brief overview of the history of the project and kind of how the idea came about. And it really it started kind of the end of 2007, and a client approached me. I was working as a freelancer at the time, and a client approached me and said, "We want to make a, a, a network of um, blogs or journals for college girls to come and sign up." So I was like, college girls, I'll, I'll take the project. And, uh, <laughs> so, so I took the project, and uh, it, it went really well. And, and, and I did the design and put it together, and they were really happy with the project, happy with the site overall. And, and they were like, well, cool, this is great, but we'd like to add some profiles and private messaging and maybe put some forums so the girls can interact with each other. So I thought, well, we're on WordPress already, and it's a great platform to extend. Why don't, why don't we write some plugins and look at what exists? And, and put it together in a package. So I kind of went out and I, and I built some private messaging uh, components and, and there were some profile components already for WordPress. So I kind of tied it all together, installed BBPress and skinned that, put it under the same look and feel, and you can share the logins, all that stuff. So it came together and it was kind of cool. The package in the end was, it was well received and, and people kind of, it generated a little bit of buzz in the community and it was kind of like, well, this is, this is WordPress in a social networking area and this is kind of great. So um, I basically thought, well, why don't I make this available to everybody? And, and, and lots of people came to me and said, we'd like to use this on our site. So I thought, let's, let's release a GPL version of this. Let's make it generic. Let's make it extensible. Let's make it kind of so people can skin it and, and brand it for their own site. So it took a while. <laughs> it took a long while. It, it, it took uh, just, just on, the, on the slide. Thanks. Um, <laughs> it did take a long while. It took 421 days to get to 1.0, but uh, it was it was worth the effort, and it, and it was an exciting exciting 421 days to to build to work on WordPress full time every day, 
and uh, and also to come on with automatic and be able to do this full time and, and really push push WordPress in ways that hadn't been pushed uh, pushed before. So um, I'm excited to see it, and, and and it's nice to see some of the community start to build up around the project. It's still very new, and, and the community is still very small, but seems like there's quite a few people that are getting excited about the project and I don't have to sit in the IRC chat room on my own and talk to myself anymore. There actually are more than one, <laughs> more than one person there, so that's kind of nice. I think the last thing about BuddyPress as well is it gives more power to the community uh, and, that, and that means more power to the WordPress community. So um, it allows theme designers and plugin developers to use their existing skill set with WordPress and apply it to a new platform and, and new areas. So if you already know how to build a WordPress plugin or design a WordPress theme, you can go and use BuddyPress and use that perhaps on some client sites or build new sites in the social area and still use your existing, uh, existing skills to, to, to use and build for BuddyPress. So um, it's kind of nice to see that happen. And it's the same for end users. It gives them the ability to socialize their existing WordPress sites. So it's going to be interesting in, in the next year or so to see where BuddyPress goes and, and who, who takes it on and who uses it. So if you want to take a look, feel free to go to the BuddyPress site and download it and try it out. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, from the moment I saw that network of college girls, I knew this was going to be big. <laughs> it's actually a cool thing about BuddyPress is that, um, I sort of alluded to this, but the BuddyPress.org site is actually powered by BuddyPress. And it's amazing to see the software sort of start to develop itself, where the developers and theme developers and everything around it are using the Buddy using the BuddyPress and the Google. They're using BuddyPress to connect with each other. And, uh, and what's fascinating is we've done you know, lots of different projects over the years. The WordPress community was experimented with a lot of things. BuddyPress is the first one I've seen that really has the momentum that WordPress did in its early days. So definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, so that's sort of on the theme extension side. How about plugins? Uh, we've talked a lot about theme. What's been going on with plugins? I thought we'd actually poll the community, ask the audience, uh, what the coolest plugins would be. Uh, so I, I put out a Twitter, I linked to a poll, and said, well, you know, what are the coolest plugins going to be? And you replied. So who can guess what number three is? I think this is actually selection bias. If you ask on Twitter, you're going to get a Twitter plugin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number three most popular suggestion. Oh, it was a plugin to add things to Twitter. Uh, number two I was pretty happy with is yet another related post plugin. Um, you know, in the classic yet another open source naming, a great plugin you can drop in and it'll sort of show related posts right on your home page. I'm using it on my blog. And then finally, the most popular one was WP Touch. Who here is using an iPhone? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Have you guys seen the new WordPress sticker? So it's like a, it's like a mullet. It's business in front, party in back. <laughs> oh, really happy with this. I think this might be, are these available on the store now? Um, yeah, they are. Sweet. Um, so you can now buy one of these. For a while, I take like two or three to every WordCamp, and it was like, like death matches. People wanted to get these. It was amazing. Um, so WP Touch, which is basically a, a plugin that it makes your WordPress sort of mobilized, allows you to interface and control WordPress from your iPhone. Um, there's also been some cool things like we introduced Common API in 2.7, and so we made a really neat uh, Air app which basically sits on your desktop and will pop up whenever there's a new comment, and you can moderate all your comments right from there. Other cool things that have been happening in plugins is third parties have really started to you know, build on top of the system. A good example is Vidla, uh, which is a video site, which actually uses WordPress for parts of the back end. They've started, they have a cool plugin where you can you know, bring in their videos and things like that. Uh, Lidget, which is sort of a blog-based, super smart search engine for you and things you love, has a really cool WordPress plugin. Well, that is not a screenshot of. <laughs> Fit app is a cool one because they allow you to take like all the photos in the world of Barack Obama and, uh, and put them on your blog. Now, actually, it's it's sort of Getty images and things like that. Uh, they give you a licensing way to put these, bring these in. Uh, Poll Daddy, which is one of ours, allows you to put polls on your blog. And latest is Video Press, which is something we're doing uh, right now. It's just WordPress.com, but .org plugin is coming out soon. Uh, allows you to upload videos and have a cool WordPress customized player right on, you know, right in. Your homepage. You can do full HD. You can have it, you know, be fast. There's no weird YouTube terms of service or anything like that. So there's lots of, in addition to all the free stuff, there's lots of businesses that which are completely with the GPL building services around WordPress that just plug right in and allow you to do some really cool stuff. Uh, not to mention Google, all the cool Google things you can put on your blog. But the next big thing is 2.8. Uh, 2.8 is coming. Um, 
it's been about six months since the last release, which was interesting. 2.7 was such a big release that we were all just kind of tired afterwards. <laughs> it, was, it was really like a, a, a lot of work getting that out to you guys. And um, the other cool thing is it's basically almost bug free. We didn't do a 0.1 update. Usually we do the release and then like a 0.1, like 2.5.1 is out like within a month, usually about three weeks later. We didn't do a 0.1 update for another like two, two and a half months. And the reason was there were, there were no big bugs. It was kind of weird. <laughs> it's like we didn't really know what to do. Um, so that's pretty cool. But 2.8 is uh, what we decided to do is sort of refocus on infrastructure, things under the hood, things um, that we didn't get a chance to look at in 2.7. For example, the widgets. Uh, those of you who are using widgets before know that there are lots of problems with widgets. You could, uh, you could only do one sidebar at a time. You couldn't move a widget from one sidebar to another. If you used a theme that had five widgets and then you switched to a theme, uh, five sidebars, you switched to a theme that had three sidebars, it wouldn't work. And all sorts of things like that. It just wouldn't quite work. Um, so we've completely redone widgets from the bottom up, both on the front end and also on the back end, making a new API for developers to really easily add new widgets. Um, the theme browser. So just like you can do with plugins, you can now, the entire theme directory is embedded in your blog. But even cooler, is we've got this great selector. So let's say you want a black three column theme with a left sidebar and custom colors, it'll show you them. And you can preview it right there from your site or install it basically with a one click. So now, you know, there's always a big uh, thing in the WordPress community, but why don't you include more themes? Why don't you include theme box like that? Now we include 800 themes with every install of WordPress. I uh, just embedded directly in there. And of course, because these are all coming from WordPress directory, you know that they're you know, they're audited, we look at the code, there's no malware, no spam, no anything. They're all sort of trusted themes. And then a bunch of other other things. Uh, code press, confirmation, press this improvements, improved screen options. It just got a ton of stuff in it. Um, mostly, just sort of stuff we didn't catch up. So it's not the most exciting release in the world. We're going to name it after a jazz musician who didn't die in like a, a blaze of glory. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit slower of release, but catching up providing a strong foundation for our run, the 2.9 and 3.0. Those of you who know the versioning scheme of WordPress is like uh, two years ago, I got really annoyed with version number inflation, partially because we were propagating it, but uh, we made a decision that just every version of WordPress was going to be something 0.1, and 3.0 would just be whatever comes after 2.9. But we do have some cool things planned for 3.0, which I'll tell you in a minute. Um, so another big thing last year that has grown is the number of international users. So last year, about 20% of 27% of downloads were from people outside of the English, outside of the US. This year, it's 42%. So this is really this, and also traveling the world, visiting work camps everywhere, has really forced me to think about, you know, how is WordPress a worldwide thing? How do we make it accessible to people of any language, of anything? Uh, one example is on WordPress TV, which you should all check out. It's got a collection of screencasts and videos. All the videos from today, like let's say you're in the, this room and you really want to see something in the other room, everything will be online on WordPress TV. We started to integrate with DotSub. So this is a WordPress screencast with uh, Arabic under it. So basically people are captioning um, all our screencasts and everything, so all the videos are accessible in any language. We're also open sourcing all the videos, so if people want, they can record their own voiceover. But the big challenge that we're coming up to is sort of theme and plugin localization. This is a picture I took when I went to Indonesia. I was at the WordCamp and I said, well, you know, are there any WordPress books here? Because usually when people write WordPress books, you know, they send them to me and they're like, oh, sure, we'll go to the store, we can pick one up, I'll take them home. I got there and there were 11 books with WordPress logo on the cover. This blew me away. Indonesia. <laughs> um, I was just sort of, uh, I didn't even know what to say. I just bought them all. <laughs> It costs like five bucks for all of them or something. It's a great deal. I, you know, wrote kind letters to the people who used the wrong logo. And then, <laughs> and it's kind of surreal to be looking at something you worked on or see your blog or something like that surrounded by text that you're never going to be able to read. But it underlies the challenge as well. So just like themes and plugins are the coolest part of WordPress and the thing that really make it most compelling. 99% of themes and plugins out there aren't available for languages other than English. Some of the big things we're going to have to tackle this year is try to create frameworks for just like WordPress is translated in 23, 28 languages. A way for every theme and plugin to also be translated into these other languages. And what's amazing is this usage of WordPress outside the US grows, we get a lot more contributions. Um, there's huge open source communities in Indonesia and in Brazil and parts of Europe, Germany, that have started to make pretty substantial contributions to WordPress. 
And so I think this is actually, as we expand the development base in these other places, it's actually going to accelerate the development even more. Now, WordCamps are pretty fun. This is a, I don't know if you can see this, in 2006, there was only one WordCamp in the world, here in San Francisco. Has anyone at that WordCamp? Remember we had the giant Superman shirt? The logo was like this big. <laughs> uh, have you seen the shirts this year, by the way? A round of applause for Coley Roper. Is she here? Coley? Right there. Shirts are really cool. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a boy shirt and a girl shirt, and they kind of connect to each other. Like the, the bubbles go out of one and then come down in the other. It's really, really neat. Um, but anyway, there was just one more camp in 2006. 2007, we had about 10 or 15 around the world, a couple in the US. And this is 2008. I don't know if you can tell, but the map just explodes. Um, I've been going to as many of these as I can, <laughs> but I'm kind of wearing out. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been just phenomenal, the growth of this. And the cool thing is that since WordPress is all about being accessible, being you know, open to everyone, it's the reason you can come for a day uh, to WordCamp, pay 20 bucks, get a t-shirt, free lunch, open bar, see some of the same speakers who were speaking at, say, D7 a couple of days ago, a $6,000 head conference, you know, all for 20 bucks. And the WordCamps around the world are like this as opposed to like an Oracle, which does one giant conference once a year, ships everyone in from around the world to San Francisco. Um, it's really neat that work camps are local. You know, for most people, they cost nothing or like the equivalent of $20 in the local currency, and they're down the street. And you get some really interesting communities popping around, up around each one of these. I think it's